In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build your own softball workout and what some of the best strength training exercises are that you should include. At the end, I'm going to show you how to order it, how to put it all together, and I'm also going to give you a free link to a great new strength training program that I've built just for softball players. In today's video, let's go over the overview. So number one, I'm going to talk about a bunch of different components that you want in a great softball workout. Number two, we'll cover the different exercises. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different exercises that you can do today that you'd want to put in, in a workout. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to order it. So what way to structure your workout. And then after that, we'll talk about some final details. And I'll give you a link to my brand new program called Early Work, which is a softball specific strength and conditioning program that includes arm care and pretty much everything that you'd want to get better, faster, stronger this upcoming season. All right. So let's get to it. Okay, so first, keys to a great softball workout. Number one, we want it to be whole body. That means push, pull, hinge, uh, squatting motions, rotational motions, core stability, forearm strength, arm care, lateral hip strength. Those are all some of the big components in a good softball workout. So the four major human movements are pushing things, pulling things, squatting at the knees, and hinging at the hips. But beyond that, there's again, things that make it more softball specific, like rotating, so learning how to hit, you know, hit the ball harder, swing faster, throw faster, all that good stuff. Those are the things that kind of make a, work, a workout softball specific. Number two, for fast pitch, we wanna make sure we have some knee injury prevention exercises. So ACL tears are much more prevalent in female athletes than male athletes. So we wanna definitely put some lateral hip exercises in the program because your lateral hips control the tracking of your knee. So we wanna do our best to give you every chance to stay healthy. So if you have strong lateral hips, it's gonna prevent your knees from caving in if you take a you know, weird step or, or any of that. So we wanna make sure we can mitigate that risk as best we can with some good lateral hip strength exercises. Next, we wanna cover throwing arm strengthening and injury prevention, which they're pretty much one the same. So another way to make a, a softball workout softball specific is that you add stuff that strengthens the throwing arm because obviously you wouldn't put throwing arm strengthening exercises in a soccer program, right? So having a, a dedicated uh, arm strength regimen is important, but we can also mix a lot of those exercises into an overall softball strength and conditioning program. Number four, we wanna focus on upper body strength because female athletes need more of that than their male counterparts. So we wanna make sure there's a lot of upper body pushing and pulling exercises because building that upper body strength is a really important foundation for a softball player. And lastly, we definitely wanna to hit tons of glute and hamstring strength because those are also important for keeping your knees healthy and glutes and hamstrings are two of the prime movers in sprinting and speed is really, really important in fast pitch. So we wanna have a bunch of exercises, like a stronger ratio of glute and hamstring exercises compared to your quadriceps. So we definitely wanna include a lot of stuff for your glutes, hamstrings, and not, as, not quite as much squatting and lunging, even though those are really great exercises and they will be in here, we wanna still balance that out with a lot of hamstring and glute dominant training. Okay, so let's jump into some of the exercises. So first one, we're gonna talk about either the front squat or the goblet squat. So the goblet squat is the best beginner squatting exercise, and you can do it just holding a five or 10 pound weight on, in the front of your chest. And holding a weight on the front of your body is important because it helps your back automatically stabilize itself. So if you have a barbell on your back, you can easily fold over at the waist and hurt your back. And that's a common, it's a, it's a common problem with young players or young athletes. But really it's better to teach them and teach their back how to get stronger and how to stabilize itself and how to have good posture uh, just from the exercise itself. So the, the goblet squat is very safe. The anterior position of the weight helps automatically put your back in a safe, strong position. The same, is, the same is true of the front squat, and the front squat is sort of like the progression from the goblet squat. So if you're brand new to training, the goblet squat's gonna be the better version for you. And then if you've got a little bit of strength and you've sort of, you can do 40, 50 pounds on a goblet squat, then you can graduate to a front squat. And the front squat is a, a pretty much the exact mechanics of the goblet squat. It's a very easy squat to perform safely, uh, but the barbell is gonna be on the front of your shoulders. Great for beginners, as is the goblet squat. So you just wanna choose which of those squats is right for you. And again, a great strength coach in person is gonna help you make that decision. All right, the next exercise is the chest supported row. And this is a great, easy to perform 
safe exercise to help build strength and size in the back. For any great athlete, their sort of foundation is their lower half and their back. The, uh, the back keeps your posture, it keeps you durable over the long season, your back is always helping to decelerate your swing, decelerate uh, your, your throwing motion, it, it is, obviously it's critical in your arm swing when you sprint, so having a strong back is really, really important. After that, we're going to do the lateral band walk. So the lateral band walk is for the lateral hips. This is going to strengthen those little tiny glute muscles in the side of your hips. And again, as I talked about earlier, these are going to be key strengthening exercises for the muscles that control the tracking of your knee. So having weak lateral hips means your knees cave in a lot more easily. Strong lateral hips are going to help protect the knee when you land awkwardly after a jump or you, you, know, you roll your ankle inward. If your knee caves too far, that's how you can tear your ACL, your PCL, your meniscus. If you have strong lateral hips, those can kick on and save that knee from going in too far and hurting itself. So we really want to make sure we have lateral hip strengthening exercises in pretty much every workout for female athletes. And so the lateral band walk is a great one to do that. The next exercise is the push-up. So the push-up is a foundational upper body strength exercise. Obviously, every second that you're doing a push-up, you're also doing a plank because you're in plank position, right? So it's a great double duty exercise. It's also great for your shoulder stability and for the movement of your shoulder blades. So it's almost like an arm care exercise, an arm strengthening exercise, in addition to an upper body exercise. So most softball players cannot do a proper push up on the ground. So what I would encourage you to do if you're a beginner or if you don't have a ton of upper body strength yet is do it with an incline. So, you know, you can see in the video here, you want to do a bar push up where you're at a higher incline and that reduces the resistance, and then you can slowly lower the bar, so you put the bar down farther and you put your hands lower, or you put your hands on a bench, and you slowly get closer to the ground as you get stronger. It's the same way as adding weight. This is adding weight by lowering yourself, which increases the resistance against gravity, essentially. Obviously, gravity never changes, but as you get closer to the ground, you know, it's easy, you'd be super easy to do a wall push-up. So the push-up is a foundational exercise. It should be a goal of yours to be able to do three sets of 10 good quality push-ups. Most players cannot. And so starting on the bar is a great way to get there. After that, we're gonna do the shot put, the, the medicine ball shot put with a crow hop. Obviously you want this workout to be softball specific. So softball specificity is arm care, it's lateral hip exercises, and it's rotational power exercises. So throwing a medicine ball and rotating through it is a rotational power exercise that's gonna help your bat speed and your throwing velocity. So that's obviously super important to include in any good softball workout. So that being said, this one adds a crow hop into it so it makes it, you know, the footwork a little more softball specific and that's great. But again, having some rotational exercises is critical in any good softball program. And we're gonna pair with this one, the one leg hip thrust. So the one leg hip thrust, as I mentioned before, is for the glutes and the hamstrings, predominantly the glutes. Strong glutes are critical to running faster, to jumping higher, and to putting a little more oomph into your, into your swing. And obviously glutes are super important for fast pitch pitchers and for overhand throwing. Your glutes are important in every aspect of the sport. So we definitely wanna include some exercise that directly strengthen the glutes. Sure, you get some glute activation from squats and lunges, but research has proven that hip thrusts are the highest glute activation of any exercise. So the barbell version, which I'm not including here, and the one leg version are both excellent. The barbell version has the most glute fiber activation. And the one leg hip thrust is pretty much the exact same exercise, but with one leg and without a barbell. So you can actually add weight to this. You can just hold weights on your hips. But the one leg exercise is a, it's a very safe, very easy for beginners. It's not actually as easy as you think it looks. Uh, but it's a great glute strengthener because again, if you want to run faster, you've got to get stronger glutes. And then lastly, we're going to finish this workout off with a set of black burns. So black burns are an amazing shoulder strengthening exercise. They're great for your scap stabilizers, for your stamina of your scapula. And, sh and softball players have a lot of problems with shoulder stability and shoulder laxity. So lots of female athletes, because they have less testosterone compared to the male athletes, they tend to have looser joints. And I think we all sort of like intuitively know this to be true, like women are more flexible than men, and that's in part due to just genetic differences. So 
the thing is having that flexibility is advantageous in a lot of sports and in a lot of activities. But in softball, when you're throwing, having a little more laxity in your shoulder can often lead to injuries because that joint isn't very stable as you're throwing. And so it sort of like rattles around and it can cause injury to some of the soft tissues in there. That's sort of like the long and the short of it. But you want to have a shoulder joint that's actually very stable and held together well with those rotator cuff and shoulder muscles. So the Blackburn's exercises, it's six exercises, one minute for each of the six, so it's six minutes total. Those are great stabilizing exercises. They're great for the shoulder movement and to the shoulder blades. And uh, it's just one of those easy ones you can do as a team. You can lay on the ground doing it watching TV. And we use them over and over with all the kids in my academy. It's great for posture. So if you're on your, you know, you're texting all day, uh, Blackburn's really help to open up that posture. Okay, so those are all the exercises for your softball workout. Now let's put it together. So the first thing that you would do is you wanna to start to pair exercises into supersets. So A1 and A2. So our first two here are the front squat or goblet squat and the chest supported row. So you would do one set of front squats and one set of chest supported rows. Then you go back and forth and do them until each exercise is complete. For front squats, I would do four sets of eight. For goblet squats, I would do four sets of 12. And for chest supported rows, I would do three sets or four sets of eight to 12 reps. Somewhere in that rep range is totally fine. So you go back and forth until you've done your four and your three or four of both exercises and then you move on to the next superset group. So the next superset group we call the B group would be the lateral band walk and the push up. So you do one set of lateral band walks and I would encourage you to do three sets of 40 yards total. So you're walking laterally for 20 yards one way, then 20 yards uh, the other way. And then B2, you do three sets of 12 to 15 push ups. And again, these could be bar push ups where you're at an incline, you're not on the flat ground. Just make sure. You're doing full range of motion and very good quality push-ups, even if that means you're not doing them on the floor yet. The next superset would be the med ball shot put and the one leg hip thrust. So these two are great to pair together because as, after you do your med ball throws and your core is a little bit tired, you can do the one leg hip thrust, which doesn't really use your upper body at all. And so your upper body and your core are resting as you're doing your lower half, your one leg hip thrust, which are mainly for your glutes. So you go back and forth between those two until you've done your three sets of each I would say three sets of eight is good for your medicine ball throws and three sets of 10 to 12 is good for your one leg hip thrusts. And then lastly, you've got black burns. So with black burns, very straightforward. I would do six, uh, all six positions, one minute each, six seconds down or six seconds up with a one second break and then six seconds up again. So you do basically like nine or 10, you know, reps of six second hold with a quick one second break. You go through that for your minute, then you go to the next position. So that's pretty much how black burns work. So hopefully this video on softball workouts was helpful because obviously it's tough to know what exercise you should choose, how you should order it, why you're picking different exercises. You know, for a, a fast pitch workout, there definitely needs to be a lot of the big lifts like front squats, like hip thrusts, stuff like that. But there also needs to be this the softball specificity, right? So the, the, the lateral band walks for your lateral hips, the, med the, you know, the medicine ball throws for your rotational power, which helps your bat speed and your throwing speed, all that stuff. And obviously the arm strengthening for your, your throwing arm and your, your pitching velocity, all that stuff. So that's what makes a workout softball specific. So if you want a ready-made for you program, the early work program, which I've created along with coach Andrew Sachs is a great program. You can get a free trial and see if it's right for you with no risk whatsoever. So if you want to just jump in into a, grand, a brand new softball workout, I'd highly recommend that you check it out in the links below and see if it's right for you. All right. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe, share this with a friend, and I'll see you here in the next video.